All right, Green Hills opened a yoga class. Wonder who the teacher is. Gotta go fast. Hey, Sonic the Hedgehog fans. Thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. It is about time we talked about the Sonic movie sequel, Sonic movie two, cause We's got a lot of movie news to catch up on it. Bear with me, Sonic fans, because this is going to be a long one. We have so much set photos and set footage of returning characters, even an organization from the Sonic video games that definitely hints to Shadow the Hedgehog and even our first look of Jim Carrey's Robotnik and what he's going to be looking like in Sonic Movie 2. So be sure you guys leave your opinions down below about the Sonic Movie sequel. What can you guys make out from these set videos I'm about to show you and all the set photos involved? In the last Sonic Movie update we did, the writers themselves said that the trailer will blow our mind so shouldn't that mean the movie itself will blow it either way there's gonna be a lot of blowing at sonic movie two. what the heck all right, so first I want to go ahead and update you guys on, you know if you've been following the Sonic Movie 2 updates here, we are set to get some sort of icy winter atmosphere, probably in reference to some of the ice caps level in the Sonic video games, but we even have a deeper look of onset of Sonic Movie 2 that involves some huskies. Oh, Simon Skit, let me bring on my husky for this nebula. We talking about huskies, I gotta show mine. How you doing, baby girl? Say hi to the people for me. Thank you. But this video here was found on Instagram from a user of Viva underscore Vera that is on the set of Sonic Movie 2 and it seems like we're going to be getting a scene that involves some sled dogs, huskies in particular, pulling a couple of characters in this film. Now, we are set to get a whole bunch of locations in Sonic Movie 2. We're set to be going to a place called Emerald Hill, which we all figure is Hawaii since we know that's a filming location. Now we know this location here in Utah that has snow all over it involving these little huskies. I was really hoping we'd do a lot of outworld exploring, but it looks Looks like we just might be doing a lot of exploring on Earth. Aside from that, the one location that we thought we were not going to be getting in this movie because we found out, thanks to Tales Channel that was letting us know, they were not returning to the same location that they filmed, Green Hill Zone, in the Sonic movie. But now we know we are going to be getting a return to Green Hills. They have just recreated it at Fort Langley where they have a lot of stuff built up with Green Hills all over plastered it. So we are still going to be playing a visit to Green Hills. It'll probably just be the beginning of the movie catching up with Sonic and what he's doing with Donut Lord and how he's living his new life. And fans have even already quickly spotted an Easter egg that might be a vital clue to some of the set footage I'll show you later whether you guys think it's Robotnik escaping or Tails flying off with somebody. That Easter egg is this coffee shop entitled Mean Bean Coffee. Now this is actually a reference to a Sonic video game entitled Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Funny enough this was supposed to be an Easter egg in the first Sonic movie because we had here Sonic the Hedgehog writers letting us know I wrote a scene where Eggman had a coffee maker labeled Mean Bean Machine but the scene got cut and the machine with it and wouldn't you know they decided to bring back that easter egg here in the Sonic movie naming this coffee shop Mean Bean. But now moving on to the set footage that has got a lot of fans rumbling and speculating to what it actually is we start off here with this video of what is now confirmed to be Wade Whipple. This was the partner in crime for Donut Lord James Marsden's character that was part of the police department for Green Hills. He's riding here on his scooter with a helmet on his head. This is just one angle of many that we've gotten of him going through the town. I prefer this footage here where we actually get to hear him speak some dialogue into what he's saying and I think it's pretty funny. Thanks for stopping ladies. Hey Diane, curb that dog. And cut, cut. So in that scene right there, you can kind of imagine that's definitely something that we'd get early on in the movie, just catching up with the characters from the first film, him trying to assert himself as an authority figure in Green Hills, being sarcastic that the ladies didn't stop for him, attacking this poor lady for her dog, but stopping right in front of the Mean Bean Coffee Shop. That's where the scene ends right there. And then later on, fans also recorded a different shot of a stunt performer in wires being lifted up into the air and taken away. And then here's where the big speculation began among Sonic fans because people are debating whether this is Robotnik flying off with the person or this is a scene where Tails comes flying in and takes the police officer, Wade Whipple. Going with the Tails theory at first, it would kind of make a lot of sense. I mean, we just saw Tails just jump into Earth and immediately needing 
needing to find Sonic. And if maybe Tails has some idea of how Earth works, maybe doing some research before he lands on here, he sees a police uniform and knows that he needs some help finding Sonic, it would make sense why he would go and grab Wade Whipple, fly him off, and ask him, do you know where this blue boy is? But then other people were mentioning that this stunt performer was not really fitting the body type for Wade Whipple. It was more of a leaner, well-fit, kept guy, and that led people to think that this could be a stunt performer for Agent Stone. Now, bear with me here. Remember in the first Sonic movie where one of the main things that Stone was useful to Dr. Robotnik was the way he made coffee. Of course I want a latte. I love the way you make them! What if ever since Dr. Robotnik was stuck on the mushroom planet and then Agent Stone has nothing left to do on Earth, decides to open up a coffee shop in Green Hills to keep an eye on Sonic and all those people knowing that his boss would return one day and he would be there for him. That would be pretty hilarious and would also make sense within the Sonic movie lore that Agent Stone is just unemployed ever since his boss went missing and had nowhere else left to go. The other reason I believe it could be Dr. Robotnik is because the next couple stuff they were filming here was this military group coming in and taking over the town. Now, I really thought this was just a regular army maybe responding to some sort of action scene in the Sonic movie sequel, but when fans paid closer attention to some of the logos on these military vehicles, it was pretty obvious it's a huge hint to some deeper lore in the Sonic video game universe. This right here is a hint to the gun organization that appeared in Sonic Adventure 2. Gun stands for Guardians Units of Nations. They appeared in Sonic Adventure 2 and also are part of the IDW comic series, but that was a different organization. And spin on that lore, we know that they're taking this directly from Sonic Adventure 2 because fans have also pointed out the extra Easter eggs on top, where right here you have the exact release date that Sonic Adventure 2 came out and even SA2 standing for Sonic Adventure 2. A way to think of this gun organization is basically the shield for the Sonic universe. They are the protectors of Earth from both Dr. Robotnik and even Sonic's furry little friends. This kind of blows my mind that they threw this into the movie because that means they really are digging deep into the Sonic video game lore. This is stepping it up not only for that reason but Sonic Adventure 2 was also well known for bringing in a certain character Shadow the Hedgehog. Now I'm a little rusty on my Sonic Adventure 2 knowledge here but I remember remember that Dr. Robotnik's great-grandfather created Shadow the Hedgehog and had him hidden under the gun organization before he was let out to go after Sonic thinking he's a clone and wanting to fight him to find out who the real Sonic is. If they're bringing in this gun organization, it could very well mean that we're going to be getting an ending tease of Shadow the Hedgehog either being built by Dr. Robotnik through that quill that he still has or maybe they'll go ahead and bring in Jim Carrey's great-grandfather and that he's known about Sonic species for the longest time. We also should have seen this coming because months ago the Illuminati went ahead and posted an article of character descriptions in the Sonic movie and they listed one office official that'll be going after Sonic. This most likely will be the commander role which is sort of like the Nick Fury for this gun organization that's the head of it. But now to the Peace Day Resistance our first look of Jim Carrey's Dr. Robotnik and what he'll be looking like in Sonic Movie 2. We have this video that surfaced online from Fort Langley where they're filming the Green Hill stuff and it's it's Jim Carrey being lifted up into the air doing what Jim Carrey does best. Now if you're watching his movements it definitely seems like he's commanding his egg drones to go after people in the town and most likely get their revenge on Sonic and the people he's loved. But if we zoom in a little closer to the way he looks one thing's for sure it doesn't seem like he's going to be wearing the fat outfit that Jim Carrey said he would wear for the Sonic sequel. If anything he'll just have a bit of that pudgy belly like the end credit scene. That really doesn't bother me. I think Jim Carrey will still do a good job even without the fat suit. He's definitely got the wacky mustache going on. He's for sure bald so he's keeping that bald look with the goggles on top of his head. I really dig this. Look for Jim Carrey's Robotnik. I do wish the outfit was red though but this footage right here just lets me know Dr. Robotnik is going to be very menacing in this sequel. Just seeing him there all cocky in the air commanding his drones. After they add on the CGI this scene's going to blow us away. I think this look is cool enough. I still wish it it was the red outfit he was wearing, but I guess the boy just likes looking good in black. We're definitely going to get some more set photos of Jim Carrey and probably other characters popping up. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and keeping up to date with all this Sonic movie news. But I want to know from you guys, what did you think of this first look for Jim Carrey's Robotnik? How do you think the gun organization will play into the Sonic world? All these other set photos and videos, let me know your thoughts down below. Smash that subscribe button, so close to 300k. But as always, my name is Chris. Take care.